Hi everyone, welcome back to the Navigant Credit Union Broadcast Center. I'm Go Local News Editor Kate Nagel. I'm joined by a very familiar face here. Judge Frank Caprio, thank you for coming in today to talk with us. You're all over the news. Kate, it's my pleasure to be here. <laughs> I am all over the news all over the country, but I am right here with you. You're right here with us. I wanted to talk with you about going national. Did you think when you start caught in Providence that it would gain this popularity to the level that people around the country would embrace some of these stories that they hear on the show and get picked up by a national entity such as Fox? <clears throat> Quite honestly, Kate, I never thought of that. It never was my goal or my desire to be on national television. Actually, I began going on television to accommodate my younger brother, Joe, who wanted to do videotaping, and he was looking for things to do because he had two hours on the uh, statewide interconnect. And he was, kept saying, I don't know what to do, I don't know what to do. I'm showing uh, graduations and police academies and you know, a variety of things. And my wife suggested that he do my court program. Mm -hmm. And I said no. <laughs> and Originally course, shot him down. And of course, you know who won that argument. My wife did. <laughs> as so, they usually do. <laughs> as they always do. So we, uh, we began that 25 years ago. My brother has been working feverishly for 25 years, editing these shows, uh, putting them on the public access channel, Channel 13, without any compensation. You know, day in and day out. Uh, it's been a labor of love for him. It's been interesting for me. And most naturally, people in Rhode Island knew who we were. And more recently, with social media, mm -hmm. you know, this our court uh, program really exploded. Now, you know we're different than any other court program in the country because we are an actual court program. We, we're not a studio job. I don't know what's coming before me until I walk into the courtroom. So we are very unique. And that sort of attracted a worldwide audience. You know, okay, we have over, over, one billion views worldwide. Worldwide, a billion views. Which means that one in eight people on this planet have viewed Court and Proud. And have seen you. <laughs> well, not so much me, but I am so but proud. But you might be the mo one of the most popular people in the world. <laughs> I am so proud that I am the face of Providence. I actually spoke to Mayor Laws today, and I, and I indicated that to him, and told him how honored I feel, and I'm particularly grateful to members of the City Council for them electing me to this position. I really am to give me this opportunity. And I feel great that we've portrayed a favorable image of Providence and of the people of Providence, well, wonderful people. And so it's been uh, it's my philosophy to treat people with honesty, decency, and respect, regardless what their station in life is. I don't care if you're a bank president, if you're unemployed, if you have no job, uh, if you're well-educated, if you're unfortunate, and you can't go to school and you don't have an education, it means nothing to me. But I don't wear a badge. I'm not looking to persecute people or prosecute them unjustly. You know, I wear a hat under my robe. I don't wear a badge. And so I t try to take all of those things into consideration. And that has resonated worldwide. We have, I can't tell you the countless number of correspondents that we have from people all over the world, China, Russia, India, Peru, France, Italy, just I, almost every country in the world where people write to us telling us, you know, that they wish in their communities that they could be treated as fairly as people are treated in Providence. So it's a great honor for me, uh, for the people of Providence, that people are looking upon us so favorably. And I'm, I'm, I'm sort of happy that I'm, you know, that I'm the face of it. That you're the face. And no, you did mention, you know, everyone has a story. And when they come before you and something's happened, you know, the person, the, the, the place that they're in, the people, you know, they might not know how they got to that point. They really have a chance when they're in that courtroom to say, here's what happened and here's where I'm at in my life right now. Do you, do you have any that stick out that really, I mean, because you've seen so many, it must be difficult to say, well, this one or that one. but. Do you have any episodes, and I say episodes, you know, examples of folks that really... Well, I do. The one, that, the one that, that we talk about is there's a mad lights one. The guy came in and there were so many lights, and it was very complicated to see which traffic light was the one that he was supposed to be doing, and you sort of understood where he was coming from. Well... <laughs> mad lights. <laughs> there are good ones and there are bad ones, you know. Uh, there was something very comical. I had a fellow come in, he was caught with speeding, and I asked him if he had anything to tell me, and he said yes, and I said, what is it? 
And he said, Judge, it was the shoes. I said, it was the shoes? He said, yes. He said, I bought a brand new pair of shoes. And I didn't realize how hard I was pressing on the gas pedal. So he was, that was his excuse for speaking. But however, and that's an actual case. Question is, when you're on the bench, do you leave your humanity in chambers before you go on the bench? Do you not have sympathy and understanding for people? When someone comes in, you can tell by talking to them. They have four children, maybe five children, you know, a single parent. They're on public assistance. They don't have any money. Unfortunately, they haven't got a place to park their vehicle. They get a number of tickets. Now they, their car is booted, and the original fines are $300, but it's now tripled. It's $900. Do you know what happens if I don't release that boot? Mm -hmm. That car gets towed. That car gets towed, do you know what happens? Now they owe the 900, mm -hmm. they owe 100 dollars for tow, and 25 dollars a day storage. They can't pay it. So they never get the car out of the tow company. The tow company ends up owning the car. Mm -hmm. You know? And now how are they gonna bring their children to school? How are they gonna get shopping for the children? So I think you have to look inside yourself and mm -hmm. say, you know, you know, the old saying about the Indians say, would you want to walk a mile on someone else's moccasins? <laughs> I look at them and say, you know, this is real life. Yeah. This isn't a stage performance. We're dealing with someone's livelihood. We're dealing with someone's life. We're dealing with someone's children. We have kids that don't have enough food. We have children who live in uh, houses that are cold in the winter and oppressively hot in the summer. You know, I mean, take all of these things into consideration during the disposition of the case. I do. Yeah. I do. I think it's only human nature. So you see people from all walks of life, as you mentioned, come before you in the courtroom. It is the kind of great equalizer, if you will. But what do you think, you know, are the biggest difficulties facing the state right now as you see these, again, folks from every walk of life come into the courtroom? Well, I think the biggest problem, and what I'm, what I'm hearing, is the people who are, who are unemployed. Now, I hear these statistics all the time that the unemployment rate is way down, but I don't, I don't see that mm -hmm. uh, in my courtroom. We have an awful lot of people who, uh, who are unemployed. And, and I think the real issue is it's education, because jobs that require an education are going unfilled, because they don't have the workforce to do it. Yeah. And unfortunately, I, I think the key to successful lives is education. You know, I'm just going to give you a statistic. Okay. If we can get one child that would not ordinarily go to college to go to college, the economic impact of that one person during that person's lifetime on the state of Rhode Island would be $700,000. So if we can get 1,000 kids to go to college that would not go, the economic impact during their lifetime is $700,000. But it's more than that. Because if people are educated, they require less health care because they take better care of themselves. If they're educated and they're working now, their children Take up taking better care of. They require less health care, and their children will probably go on to college. So the key is education, and I, uh, I know that our legislature and the our state offices are working hard in that regard, and I hope that they're successful. Well, I appreciate your coming in today because folks were so interested to know yesterday this show going national. Now, but as you mentioned, social media, those individual episodes get picked up over a billion times. One billion. One million people have viewed this face. <laughs> one billion. Now I'm looking at you. One billion two, one billion three, one billion We've four. We've got even more. Could there be a Caught <laughs> in Providence five. one billion five? <laughs> caught in Providence the movie. <laughs> Could there be a possibility? I don't know what the future holds in store. <laughs> but whatever, whatever the future holds in store, I hope it's good for the state of Rhode Island. I hope it's good for the city of Providence. And I hope that other people will benefit from it. As you know, I don't benefit financially from this. Because I can't, because it's part of my job. It's but just your job, and people watch it all around the world. And you, as you said, put that face on. One of the good things from Rhode Island that is seen around the country, around the world, and now is going to be nationally in 2018 with Fox. And so we wanted the judge in today to talk right to you, our viewers. So I appreciate your time. I know you are a busy man. Okay, and when Kate calls, I come running. <laughs> judge Caprio, thank you so much for coming in. Hopefully, thank we'll you. talk with you soon. Happy holidays. Thank okay, thank you. I'll let you go around the corner. Judge, that corner, go keep walking. We got some wine back there, too. <laughs> Judge Frank Caprio came into the studio today to talk about the big story we had on Go Local yesterday, which is that his show, Caught in Providence, 
has been airing for 25 years, now picked up by Fox, but made an interesting point, really the advent of social media and seeing those individual episodes, some of which he even mentioned his favorite, have been seen all around the world. And he hears from people, as he said, that say they appreciate his honesty and his leniency. And again, representative of Rhode Island here, we appreciate the judge taking the time to come into the studio and talk right to you, the viewers. Hopefully we'll have him back in. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back at the Navigant Credit Union Broadcast Center with our next guest.